What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. I'm here with a special guest, Vernon Crump, official referee, CEO of The Official. Go ahead and say something, man. Come on, man. Let's What's get up, this man? energy up. <laughs> What's up, Manny, man? Thanks for having me here, bro. All right, man. Let's get it. We're going to get straight to it. I'm going to cut the movie down. So we go ahead and get into it. And uh, so first, I I know you was hurt. You was hurt last week when your team lost. The My team lost. This guy busted. is a Duke fan, but I'm I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish it before I before I start clowning you on that a little bit. I'm I'm gonna finish introducing you. So we sitting here with an official referee, uh, Vernon Vernon Crum Jr. You referee. You referee high school games, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, Most school high school. Yeah, multiple sports. Um, you've got a chance to to referee some good kids, some good competition, mm-hmm. uh, a few tournaments. AAU, right? Especially at AAU, the uh, NY to LA is the most recent one. Uh, okay. You know the. Adidas tournament. We got an Adidas tournament coming okay. out this this weekend that I might be at. So yeah, so so you you referee good talent. You referee yeah. good talent. All right, so all right now we going straight to the Duke and, and MSU game. I was I was personally thrilled that MSU won this game. I was excited. I didn't know. I, I knew it could be done, and I knew it was possible. I knew MSU had a chance from the jump. Um, especially because I believe Zion Williamson is overrated. Um, yes, he's a good kid. Yes, he's he's talented. Yes, I understand all that. But he is a bit overrated, and it's still a big. It, it's it's a slight chance for him to be a bust. It's still a chance for him to be a bust, especially coming from your school, Duke. You know, y'all got a lot of those. <laughs> y'all got a lot of those. Y'all got a lot of busts. A so, lot of schools got a lot of busts. That's true. But Duke Duke is is a big one. Come on now, you know it. Duke is a big one. Y'all got a lot of busts. So. As a referee, we've seen games. We've seen games where referees have made bad calls late game, and it was a point in time in the MSU game. I believe it was before the last play. Um, MSU they touched the ball to go out of bounds, so it was Duke's ball. Right. And situations so like that, you know, as as audience, I'm at home watching the game. I'm not there. I'm at home watching the game. You know, and referees y'all huddled up. Y'all just looking at the thing, the whole, the, the 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 little screen, the whole entire time reviewing the play, trying to make sure y'all got it right. What what is going on during that time period while we watching at home and we trying to figure out what's taking the referees so long? I just want to know what's going on. Look, I've never been in that exact <laughs> situation to where I I'm not high enough to be looking back on replays in the middle of a D1 game like that. Okay, but okay, okay. Um, from my from my perspective. All we're trying to do is just make sure the call is right. Okay, um, okay, I, okay as, that makes as sense. As simple as that. Just trying no. to make sure we get it right because okay. we don't want to give one team an unfair advantage. All right, now about the unfair advantage thing. How how do you personally feel about calling fouls during the late end of the game? Like when it's only about 20 seconds left and the team is, is just about to run the clock out and shoot a last-second shot. How do you personally feel about calling a foul which can either bail the team out or give another team – of uh, uh, unfair event. How, how do you feel about that? Nah, that, it's all about being consistent. Okay. So okay, that makes it's sense. all about being consistent. The game, going into the game as a referee, you do your research just like the players do. On you know how the players got their scouting reports on the other team. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. got our scouting reports on each team that we're about to officiate. So we know we're about to be in a competitive game. So. We're going to be looking for certain things based on each game. If we got more physical play versus more like um, okay. half court play. Okay, that makes and, sense. That makes, yeah. And with that, we're going to call the game a certain way. We're going to make sure that one one team, both teams, to get a, you get know a what good, saying, get, good have share equal, of foul calls. No, it ain't about foul calls. It's not just about foul calls. <laughs> foul we're going to make sure both game. teams are playing the game properly. And not getting the advantage over another. If you foul, you that's foul. True. That's true. Period. I, I respect you. Call you, it. you know, as a rep, you know, foul calls change the game. They do. They do. They they change the they game do. big time. They change it, especially when when um you got one player on a team that's shooting about twenty two free throws. I'm not. I'm not speaking high mm-hmm. school because maybe I'm. I'm sure I, I ain't never seen a high school player shoot that right. many free throws in my life. But I'm. I'm just referring to like NBA and stuff now. Like at this right. point, you know, it's some players that shoot. 22 free throws, 24 free throws, and it's like like every almost every night, and it's just ridiculous to me. In my opinion, that's it's it's it should not be. I mean, it, it can go either way. It can go either way, but it's it's just tough, man. To that's, that point, that's tough. 
to that point, that's on the on that player, that offensive yeah, player. Yeah, that's true. It, that's is, why yeah, yeah. is doing mm-hmm. what he needs to do to get to the line. They yeah. driving, um, putting the defense in a position to where they they're. I agree. Fouling. Yeah, know? I agree. I I do think that's on the players too. That that make a big difference. That make a, di- a big difference. So all right, back back to the Duke game though. Um, well, we talked we talked a little bit before we start. We we briefly talked about how um, you you disagree with the play call that Coach K ran when during that I last. Didn't second. disagree. I just kind of question. You were, <laughs> from from the people I've talked to and people I've I've spoken with, I've I've heard. I mm-hmm. heard some rumors that that your boy was out coached. <laughs> that, oh. I, I heard that your boy. People were saying. Uh, okay. People were saying Tom Izzo had him beat that game. They said he out coached him. And I, I, and the the very last play of that game, mm-hmm. it was ran so smooth. Tom Izzo ran a smooth play that play, and that was and, and credit to the guy passing the ball in because he made a great decision as well. But you you gotta admit, what what you think about that? Was your man's out coached? Coach K, was was Co- Coach K and coach. Tom oh, Izzo yeah. are two of the greatest coaches yeah, I agree with that, in history. Yeah. Um, was he out coach? I I'm I'm not in a position to say that. <laughs> but was it's, it's was, a possibility. was Coach K's play that he drew up executed properly? I don't Probably think not. so. That whistle really saved him. I, I, I the, don't the, think the whistle really saved him. Yeah, the I whistle. don't think the play that happened in the end of the game. Was exactly what Coach K drew up. Drew up. Okay, I, you think Zion should have got the ball? Look, I, <laughs> in my opinion, I'm giving it to Zion on that last on that last play. I w- just I w- because you're down was down one at that yeah, point down, in time. You down two, yeah, one, you down two. one with six seconds left. Zion is pretty much unstoppable <laughs> in, in the paint. They're in the paint. Okay, in the yeah, paint. That way. In the in paint. paint. Yep. There was a play earlier in the game where it was like it was he oh, went he, against three players. He, yeah, he was he was and was one. Ridiculous. Give me that. I was watching so, it, and, and that's that's part of what I mean too. By like he's he's a good player. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not gonna hate on him and stuff like that. But he also has potential to be a bust. You're right because everybody does. Yeah, that's true too. Everybody does. Everybody does. But as much hype as they give Zion and stuff, talking about oh he's the new LeBron, oh the, and all that stuff. I, I ain't trying to hear that. I don't, I don't be wanting to hear none of that because I'm like. You know, college basketball and NBA basketball is two different things. In college, Zion is way bigger than everybody. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he's going to be able to just dog everybody in the paint, grab rebounds, and just dunk on anybody in the paint. So he's going to look more NBA ready. So when he gets to the NBA, then this, the other people are strong. You got centers down there that's, that's strong, in shape, mm-hmm. got muscle on them. They're not going to let you just bully them like that. Yeah, some of them. You might you might can get a small percentage of centers where you can bully them maybe, but as Zion six seven six eight, uh, it's it's tough that he's gonna. It's it's rare that a player his size is gonna be able to just bully centers and things like that. So I I, I look that's and and I also look at it a skillful way, mm-hmm. skill wise. Look at it skill wise. Um, Zion he's big and strong, but skill wise, he still has a lot to work on. He still got to get some moves. I've seen him develop over over the course of the season where he's gotten more moves as time goes on and things like that. But when he gets to the league, that's also going to have to come with that the extra overtime, the overtime and the work that you put in. Mm-hmm. So to me, yeah, I, he has potential to be a bust, of course. Um, he is overrated, 100%. 100% about that, overrated. Media hyped this man up like, like no other. <laughs> they hyped him up like no other, but ultimately – I said all of that just to sim- simply say that I, I would have gave him the ball. <laughs> I would have gave him See, the ball. You would have gave him the rock, too. I would have gave him the ball, man. After yeah. you clowning him like that, he, you right. still going to give him the ball. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, though. I mean, I'm I'm giving him his credit and saying that he, hey, he's a ball player and that he's good. Yeah, he can win for sure. Yeah, I'd give him that. But I would have gave him the ball. I don't think that was the right thing uh, to do it. And in terms of out coaching, Things like that. It were time moments in the game where Coach K had the advantage. He was out coaching. Yeah, that uh, game timing. swung a lot. Oh yeah, oh, that yeah. game. Sw- and then to to Michigan State's credit, they came out with some fire. They did. They came out with they energy. Came out, they the came. first play of the game was a dunk, fast break dunk. The first play of the second half was the alley oop dunk. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They so, came. They came out balling. They was. They wasn't scared. I think. I think they can. I, I honestly believe they can win it all. 
if they keep that same hunger that they came out with. Oh, they're going to have to keep that energy for sure. You know, you, that's when teams go wrong, when they get the underestimating, mm-hmm. underestimating things and like that. And that's, that might have happened to Duke. It's possible. It's possible. They probably came out um, underestimating MSU maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Not even right. a lot. Probably just, you know, didn't think they was going to come out as hard. And, and then again, though, what wasn't there uh, some issues with a player right before the game for Duke? Or was that the game beforehand? I don't, somebody I don't, not playing? I don't really remember. I, no, I don't so, even remember. I there, okay. I that that might have been, like, that <laughs> might have been, been the game before. Um, I could be mistaken. But somebody was like, Coach, I, Coach K, I can't play. And they're like, Bro, tip off is in an hour. What you mean? <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> like issues like that off the court, you know, could play into that's true. the morale the play- of the team for oh, that yeah. day. Oh yeah, that's a big thing too. All right, so so for we we talk about Zion, mm-hmm. um, on more on the bigger side, more on the stronger side. You being mm-hmm, an official referee, mm-hmm. I'm sure you you uh, had to officiate where where it was one kid that was just way bigger than the others, whether he was just taller, skinny, or whatever, or mm-hmm. taller, skinny, or or whatever. So if if you Watching somebody and they're they got all these muscles and just bigger than everybody on the court. Are right. you less likely to call a foul? Like being an official referee, are you just less likely to call a foul because you think like maybe they should be able to endure more because you know they, he's much bigger and he playing against people who's fairly smaller than him. So, would, are you less likely that, to call a foul in that situation? That that's a judgment call. Um, well, I guess all calls is a judgment call, but um, mm-hmm. if. If I got a bigger player and there's a smaller defender, if that smaller defender, regardless of their size, alters someone's shot or knocks a bigger dude out of position, okay, then okay. I'm going to make that call because that they pushed them out of position or, or whatever the case may be. You you created a disadvantage for the offensive player. Now, granted, the defensive player is always at a disadvantage Oh yeah, because – He's you like, on defense. So he's a bigger player, too. You know so. what I'm saying? So you're always at a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, but that's why we're there to try to <laughs> level that out. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yo, I, I'll give you credit right now because you're way better than me, man. <laughs> 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 if I was a referee and somebody is way bigger, I'm, man, I'm like, look, you're supposed to be able to endure that, that, small, <laughs> <laughs> that little bump. So you, I give you credit for that. Um, uh, that would be challenging for me, and I think for a lot of people that that's ta- challenging. But then again, I feel like it's a personal thing too. It's also something that can be learned too. It's not. It's not really that difficult. Like when you get, when you're that close to the play, it's oh, yeah. a lot easier to know if that's like true. okay, yeah, he jacked them up on that play or not. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sometimes whereas we'll, like you're in the in the stands. Uh-huh. You might think something's a foul or be yeah, like, that's, yeah. there's no way that that's a foul. But you weren't right on top of the play like how we are on the court with the players. That makes sense. So, yeah, because, you know, when we're at home or when like people like me are at home watching and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we, we might not see all angles. But, but then again, the cameras, they do collect a lot. They <laughs> collect <laughs> nowadays. They the cameras, collect yep, almost right. everything. So right. yeah, they collect almost everything. So we do see a good portion of it, but then right. again, that that's true because it doesn't compare to the the on court experience. Like you right there on the court, right mm-hmm. next the per, the players are right in front of you. So and, it, it, go ahead, go ahead. And a little common misconception with people right now is that like officiating is hard, kind of like what you said. I mm-hmm. mean, there are difficult plays that got to be made um, yeah, or called, but. Like overall, in the grand scheme of things, like if you kind of know if you know what you're doing or you know the game, then it makes it right. makes the job a little bit easier. And the camera, to your point, to catch everything, we use that to make ourselves better every day, just like the players do for film. So mm-hmm. we go back and look at plays because you got to think about the start, develop, and finish. Okay. That some some people only see like one Who's little that? thing. You got to have a patient whistle and look all the way through okay. the development of a play before you make that call. I, that makes a lot of sense, man. Look at so. you. Being an official like your brand. <laughs> 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 that makes a lot of sense. Um, speaking of, uh, that that just made me think too. Um, so, vice, same thing, but kind of vice versa. Smaller mm-hmm. guy, smaller guy is, is still about the same answer, answer if it's a smaller guy mm-hmm. um, and he's going going up against bigger people and stuff like that it's still kind of like the same idea of what you were saying it's, when I was, 
Yeah, it, it, it's a similar answer. Um, but at, then, like, then in that perspective, you got to take account on both ends, really, somebody getting injured. Mm-hmm. You know, a bigger person is more likely to endure the bump. Okay, endure the bump and not get hurt. Right. right. Whereas, like a smaller person. They, they could get hurt, so... That makes sense. You got to kind of factor that into that decision, too. So you can't just give a smaller person every little ticky-tack and penalize the defense for being big. Yeah, they know, yeah that's like, true. Like, you can't just penalize them for being big, but then oh, yeah. again, you can't let them hurt another player. Yeah, but you sense. can't let a little person hurt a big dude either because he <laughs> could easily <laughs> make a big dude trip or fall, and, yeah. then, like, that would be just as bad. So, that you know, a lot of sense. it's... That makes a lot of sense, yeah, because I know um, I was always a smaller person. So, <laughs> I've, and, and it's, it's times. I give credit. I'm I'm a little more understanding now than when I did mm-hmm. um, play because I would try and draw contact. If I ain't get the foul, I'm looking at the ref like, what, what's going on? <laughs> Your whistle broke? I'm looking at the ref like, come on now. But you right. got to blow the whistle and things like that. So, times – where people are are getting up off the floor or say if you miss a call or something you may not feel is a foul and players are are, are getting at you and stuff about it. Mm-hmm. How do you handle those situations? Are those situations just like easy to easy to blow off or just easy to just keep playing and stuff like that? Or or are, is it is it actually like a strategy behind it or or any kind of way like that? What's if if I have a no call because I, I didn't feel that was a foul or sometimes you might just not see it. You know, some some things we might not see, whether I, I could potentially not be in position and not right. have seen the angle the best. And I'm not going to call something if, like, I'm not confident in that call. So sometimes there's some situations where, like, I'm, I didn't have a foul and there probably should have been one. But since I wasn't in the right position, I wasn't confident enough to know for sure that that was, was a foul, foul or call. not. Right, you know, right. and then a player would get up like, bro, that was a foul. Well, <laughs> you know, sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't on it. <laughs> you know, so, and and that's right, unfortunate, right. but that's something you learn as and as you, you officiate going. and you keep yeah. going, and and so you you think back after the game, like, okay, well, you know, you just kind of think about that play. Did he? Was that a foul or whatnot? And then you just kind of move on. The game, the game ain't gonna stop. Cause you didn't call right. the foul. Yeah, yeah. you gotta we keep going. We gotta keep you... playing now. <laughs> right, but right. Then again, we like on the next play. If there's something similar, I'm gonna be trying to pay more attention to that mm-hmm. coming down. Cause if I missed it the first time and it really was a foul, I'm gonna be trying to look for that and make sure I get it right the next time. Okay, cool, cool. That that may, that that sounds good, man. That, that sounds really good. So I, I want to go back to the Duke and MSU game. Why, right. why have you here? Because I know you're a Duke fan, so I want to rub it in just a little bit. Right. <laughs> I want to rub it in just a little bit. So in big games like that, mm-hmm. big games like that, um, some people say you shouldn't go with the, the the hero ball, like in the last second shot, or some people say uh, just go with the best overall open shot, especially like in, in – or in like big games like that with uh everybody on a team is pretty effective. Mm-hmm. Um you got shooters on a team, you got people who can get to the get to the hole and things like that. So some some people agree that there shouldn't be hero ball. Um there should just be team play. I'm a person with hero ball. I'm like if you have a best player, if you got the best player in college basketball as some people say or if you have a player on your team who's better than others. Mhm. Give him the ball, let him go to work. I'm, I'm, that's, that's the kind of mindset I go with. Or if you have a player who's significantly better, let him score. Let him be great. Right. Some other others go around, and, and they might think, uh, well, you know, this player might be good, but, you know, you still got other players on the team who are effective, and they can still be effective in these late-game situations. What's mm-hmm. your personal, personal pres- preference on that type of situation? Or, or what, where, would you, where would you go with that? Like hero ball? Or are you just more of a whoever gets the shot, let's shoot it. Look, I'm trying to win. <laughs> Period. I'm with you. I'm so with you. So if my hero isn't being a hero that night, mm. yeah. why would I give them the ball? Is, but is that when you go to the second option? Are you going to go to the second going option? I'm my second option. Okay, for so you're sure. still going hero. Is but, he, you, but is he the hero? Is, well, I'm saying you're still picking a play, some player on your team who's going to be that hero. Look, my whole team <laughs> is full of heroes. That's how I'm. That's how I'm thinking about yeah, it. Every, I don't got nobody on the court who I don't think can produce. 
Okay. If I'm trying okay. to win, I'm not putting nobody on the court who I don't think can make a bucket or I get agree. a rebound. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. I want my best five. On the I court. want my best five on the court in that situation. And second, if I do want to go the hero route and give it to my big guy, I may still give it to the second or third guy to distract, just to get it to my oh, big okay. guy. Wait. Or if I know that people are expecting my hero to get the ball, I give it to him. But then they're going to be sleeping on my fourth guy, and he's going to go back door and get this lob. Is that what you want? Oh, okay, you going to throw the you know, lob It's strategy. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, though. Like, you got to think about saying. those things. You can use your hero. You your hero can be a hero in different ways. He don't always got to put the ball in the hole. That makes a lot of sense. I, I get what you're saying. But All then right. again, that... I'm I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too much into it because I guess depending on how anybody looks at it, mm-hmm. they can turn that into like a, a team situation. But I, I guess which saying. is kind of what I did. Yeah, yeah, so it's like but, a kind of like a team situation. But but, but, but it depends is, on your personnel too, though. It de- does depend on, on my personnel. personnel. If I ain't got nobody on the squad and I just got my one, if I'm, I'm if, like, look, bro, you gotta do. I put it this way. Put it this way. If I'm MSU mm-hmm. and in the situation or in the Say Duke and MSU, the situations were swapped. Mm-hmm. End of the game. MSU was down by a point. They needed a bucket. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I'm in that situation, I'm I'm not doing team ball. I'm doing Cassius, give me a bucket. Especially because he was playing really he was I'm, playing, I'm thinking he was the playing same good thing. all night. I'm Cassius thinking was the balling same thing. all night. So Cassius I'm, is making great decisions with the ball. Oh yeah. He putting the ball in the hole when he needs to. And he get it up. He get the shot up. He get the off. shot up. And so, it may go in. He gonna get that's to the exactly. Cup. That's kind of like what I said at the very beginning to answer your question. Like, mm-hmm. who who's playing good right. that yeah. game? Like, right. is my hero producing that night? Yeah, because yeah, Cassius true. was producing that night. Because you don't. Know, that's true. That, I, go ahead, Zion go ahead. was producing that night too. I love but he it. he started off slow. Started he off start on the slower slow, side, but then he you know he got his stuff together, yeah. and then he put yeah. his team on his back just like Cassius did. The only difference is he's cash just one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know that hurt you to say that. I know that. I know that hurt you to say that. Cash just one. That's true. I, well, I'm I'm glad Cassius and, and MSU won, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, I support both Michigan programs. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Well, you might end up reffing for him one day. <laughs> you, right, you, right, might, right. you might call some games for, or, or yeah, ref for. You might have to blow the whistle and stuff. If you, I, I hope you don't ever have to ref a, a Duke. And and Michigan State game again. <laughs> I'm sure you call it fair. But I would. I would. I, I have trouble with that. Uh, I'd try and do the best I could. But you gotta be, be unbiased, man. You gotta it, it is. <laughs> it's yeah. Because at the end of the day, at from a at least from my perspective as an official, mm-hmm. I don't really care what the scoreboard says right, in right. terms of points. Or really, because I'm be looking at myself as doing your job. Was that a fair game? Did I was that? Yeah, did good I do? A, do I do? A, did I do a good job? Right. Officiating that game was that evenly played? Right, right. You know, right. that's all I really care about. Who wins or loses? You know, yeah, we want to see. Duke yeah, the fans want to see this like team but win. You got fans on the other win. side too. Yeah, though. and those fans yeah. want to see the other team win too. So really, like. Where who am I to be wanting another team to win versus another? I can't do that in my that job. Makes sense. Brandon, so, I give you credit for that, man. Right, I give you credit because you, know, <laughs> you know, you know, a lot of people dog referees. Yeah, a lot of fans uh, and a lot of people in general. We we dog referees through all sports: football, mm-hmm. basketball, anything. Uh, right. uh, umpires, we dog them. Because um, sometimes we disagree with the cause, and that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff to handle. That's a lot of pressure to handle. So I give you credit for that, ma'am. Well, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, I hundred percent give you credit because I'm sure you've endured situations where fans were going crazy, and and mm-hmm. you blew that whistle and it changed all to another game. <laughs> hey, but those 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 hype <laughs> games though, those those big games, those are the games that. You would love to officiate because they mean something. Yeah. Whereas, like, sometimes, Causes. you know, not to knock other types of games, but, like, a little middle school game where you got five parents in the stands and <laughs> the kids don't even <laughs> really want to hoop there right, anyway. Right. Like, right, they, right. they don't really mean as much. And they, yeah. you know, saying so you get fulfillment doing all of those big games. When you make a call like that and you're strong with it and confident, mm-hmm. it's like, 
I don't know. It's a whole. Di- it's know, like I being can't. a third. It's the third team it's on the, the court. Excitement. It's, it's excitement. exciting, bro. So yeah. more people need to try and get into it. Yeah, I, I, man, I bet uh, if you're an honest person, <laughs> right? If you're an honest person, <laughs> you're unbiased. If you're unbiased <laughs> to any team, or if you know you can be unbiased, then it will be a good. It would be a good fit. But me right. personally, man, I no, nah, I'm, I'm, I stick to talking about it. <laughs> I stick to talking about it, and as much as I talk over here, I don't say so many things about people, one team. People just go automatically assume, nah, he's biased toward this team. He don't like that team. People who ain't never did it before always got something to say. <laughs> hey, that's facts, though. That's that facts. That's facts. true. 